Hi, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Jack. I'm the director of UKB Marketing and in this video series, I'm gonna teach you how to run Facebook advertising campaigns. So this is a series directly aimed at beginners who want to learn how to run Facebook campaigns from start to finish in terms of not knowing a thing before watching the series all the way through to being an experienced Facebook advertiser. So this series is designed to do that for you. Now, this first video is covering everything that happens before you run a campaign. So there's several steps you need to go through before you can even start to run a Facebook ad campaign. You can't just launch up the ads manager and start clicking around and going live with campaigns. They're not gonna work. There's several things you will need before that. And I'm gonna talk about those today in this video. I wanna make this video series super actionable. So I recommend you write down the following steps in terms of what you're gonna need before you start advertising on Facebook. So the first one is a Facebook page. If you don't have a page, you cannot advertise. I'll show you how to create that in one second, but you're gonna need a Facebook page if you don't already have one. The second thing you're gonna need is an Instagram account. Now this is optional. You can use your Facebook page to kind of create a little profile on Instagram in terms of showing the campaigns, but when someone clicks on your profile, you go through to your account, it won't actually show a full Instagram profile because there isn't one. It will just show like the Facebook page information, but it's not the best. What you want is you want to have an Instagram account, ideally with some of your brand contents. When someone clicks through from your ad to maybe explore more about your brand, they can actually see your profile and they can see imagery content and things like that before they make a purchasing decision if they want to. The next thing you're gonna to want to have is a business manager. So you can run ads from your own profiles Facebook ad account, which is kind of like the default, but you want to create a business manager if you're taking things seriously, because this is somewhere where you can add your staff members into, you can manage permissions, you can add pages, you can add partners, you can set up all your payment details. It's kind of like a business profile for your brand. Um, and it's going to mean you can have multiple Facebook ad accounts under that same business. You can verify there's a lot you can do by having a business account and you're going to want to set that up and I'll show you exactly how to do that again in one second. The next thing you're going to want to have is a Facebook ad account. So as I mentioned earlier, there's two ways you can do this. One is to have one through your personal profile and the other is to have an ad account underneath your business manager. We're going to want to set one up inside your business manager. It protects you a lot more from liability. For example, if your personal ad account got blocked or your profile got restricted from advertising, which can happen from time to time, sometimes for violating policies, other times it can get flagged incorrectly. If you have a business manager set up in the correct structure, which I'm going to show you in a second, it will protect you from that. Your employees could still access the ad account. You could still run campaigns and you could onboard an agency who can manage that for you, even if your personal profile gets restricted. So it insulates you from as much risk as possible, essentially, by doing it that way. The next thing you're going to want to have is a Facebook pixel. So this is essential for reporting on what happens on your website from someone that you send via Facebook. So for example, if one person clicks on your ad and they go through and make a purchase, the pixel will tell Facebook this person that they sent has purchased your product and then that reports back into your ads manager and it helps the campaigns optimize because Facebook can then learn, okay, this type of person responds well and becomes a leader of sale. Let's show the ads to more people like that. So it's essential that you have this set up. I will have to make future videos in terms of the how-to of this setup. It's beyond the scope of this video, but it is very important. You're gonna to wanna to send browser and server-side data with unique event IDs and as much information as possible back into the platform so that Facebook can learn at a higher rate and have a high match score. These are all very important things. But for now, just write down the fact you're going to need a Facebook pixel set up. The only caveat to this is if you're running Facebook lead forms, you don't need to have a Facebook pixel and we can talk more about that. But nine times out of 10, you're going to be running something like a purchase conversion campaign or you're going to be sending traffic to your website for them to become leads by filling out a specific form. And that will require a Facebook pixel. So the sixth thing on the list that you're going to need is somewhere to send your traffic. Now, if you have an existing website, that's exactly what I mean by this. So you can have somewhere to actually send people to. If you're brand new and you don't have anything like this, you're going to need a specific landing page or you're going to need a site. You need a location where you can actually put the link into Facebook so they can click and get taken there. Now, that's a fairly obvious one, but I thought I would add it to this list for completeness and it is something that's very important. And that ties me on to the last one, number seven, which is having a strong offer. So a lot of people, yeah, this kind of goes beyond the scope of the mechanical how to set stuff up, um, but it is very important to know if you're just going to send traffic to your homepage of your site, you know, typically that's not going to generate as many conversions as if you're sending people to specific either product collections or product pages or specific offers. For example, if you're an insurance company and you're sending traffic to your site and just sending it to your homepage and maybe you have all your different insurance products like nested in your menus at the top, that's not 
um, as much of a positive user experience for people clicking through from Facebook as it would be if you had a specific page that you're sending people to, maybe related to a strong offer where they could get, you know, I don't know, six months up front, um, you know, some sort of special bonus or they get an Amazon gift card when they click on, um, you know, through the ad and they take out an insurance policy. Something that would be unique to your business, something that would make it easy for them to transact with you versus something that would make it very complex for them to have to click through and try and find information on your site. So you want to make everything as easy as possible. If you're a store and you're sending people to your homepage when you have multiple products, it's very unclear for them to know what to do and they're going to have a drop off because they're going to have to invest more mental capital to search for the things they want. Whereas if you have a specific product vertical that you want to send people to, maybe your highest revenue generating products, you can use those on your campaigns. And then when someone clicks through, they're being sent either that specific product page or a collection of those same products if that's relevant. So I'd recommend having a strong offer and really thinking about this. This is going to be one of the pivotal points as to whether your campaign succeed or not. If you don't have strong offers and you're just sending people to random pages, your campaigns will flop. Now, like I say, this is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. I don't want to go too much into offer creation on this. This is more of a how to in terms of the technical setup, um, but that's definitely something to write down and to start thinking about. So now you've got your list of items that you know you need before you set up the campaign. Let's go through them in a little bit more detail. And I also want to explain the structure of a Facebook ad account and a business manager, because I think that's really pivotal at this point before we move forward. So let's take that structure. At the very top, when you have a business account and to create a business account, you can go to business.facebook.com forward slash create. And that's gonna take you to this page here. And what you can do is you can click create an account. You can enter your business information and it's gonna create you a meta business account. So that's the first step. If you've never done this before, I'd recommend you go ahead and do that straight away you're then going to have your business account and it's going to look a little bit something like this over here okay so this is the one that we have for our business so you can see here we've got our UKB marketing business name over on the left hand side you've got things like your users here so you can add your staff members under people um, you've got your accounts this is where you would add things like pages your ad accounts uh, you've got data sources where you would add your Facebook pixels and you would set all of that up. Um, you've got brand safety where you would add things like domain. So one step you actually have to do when you're setting up tracking is you have to verify the domain of your site. So you have to actually prove that you own your website. And that is a very important step. So that would be done under brand safety. So essentially that's the kind of overall structure of a business manager, but it's really important that you understand the kind of hierarchy of why we're doing this. So think of a business manager as a big folder where you're going to keep everything inside. It's almost like a big building with all of your assets inside them or a folder with all of your assets inside it where you're going to add things into it. So this is why it's really important because each business manager that you have and you're allowed to have more than one, when you have a business manager, what you can do is all of the things related to your business, that specific business can go inside that one business manager. Now for us as an agency, we can also add partnership requests so we can actually bring other people's business assets into our business manager so we can manage them without having to have login details and all of that kind of thing, which would be very unsecure. So um, it creates a great um, sort of way to collaborate with agency partners and things of that nature but more simply think of a business manager as a top level everything's going to sit underneath that so what do we have underneath it well the first thing we have like i said is you can add your staff members okay so under users here you can add people and you can add partners so this would be where you would add all of your you know, staff members for example you can literally click add people you can type in their email address you can choose what level of access they have and you can click next and invite them. They'll get an email through and that will ask them if they want to join your business manager. If they click yes, you can then manage their permissions so you can add certain assets to them or you can remove certain assets if you don't want them to have access to things and you can choose what level of permission they have. For example, you might want someone to be able to run an ad but not post to your page. That's something that you can choose in the people um, element of this. The next is accounts. So you've got things like pages. This is where you're going to add your Facebook pages in and you can do this a few different ways. So one thing you can do is you can um, click add and you can add an existing page. Okay, so if you already own it through your personal account, perhaps you set one up before you set up a business manager, you can add it. You can request access to a page if someone else owns it, but you need to manage it or you can create a new page. So if you're brand new, I'd recommend you click create a new page and you can do things, uh, you can create a page for your business. The next kind of rung underneath that that sits is the ad account, okay? So this is where you're gonna actually create your ad account. Um, you can click add here again, you can add an existing ad account, you can create, uh, you can request access to an existing one 
or you can create a new ad account. There will be a limit to how many each business manager can create. I think at the beginning it's typically one or two. And then as you spend more money, that limit can be increased and you can end up having multiple ad accounts within there, which is great. Now there's other things as well. I'm not gonna go through every single line item here. Data sources is another really important one. Again, pixels. So you know, you've got your different pixels here and you can create a new one. So you can add a pixel. You can give it a name and you can set one up. You can also have pixels shared across to a business manager. So if you have an existing Facebook pixel that can be shared into your business manager, um, which is great. And again, that can happen for other businesses if you're collaborating with them. You've got things like custom conversion events, which can be set up at the um, business manager level. You've then got brand safety. This is probably the next really important one to fill out. So you'd wanna go into domains. Um, you'd wanna add in your own domain into here so that you can verify it um, with your business manager to prove that you own it. And then finally, one thing you want to do is add your business info. So you want to go into here, you want to add any of your um, business information that you can add as much as possible would be best. And then what that's going to allow you to do is just keep your account in good standing. The more information you add when you have to verify it, it's going to make the whole process easier and it's just best practice. Um, you can also see your ad account limit. So you can see at the moment mine is five for this specific business manager that we have. You can choose some other options. You can choose your own information as well. So again, this is a great step to take and I'd recommend that you do this. Okay, so let's recap. So what you need to do, first of all, is you need to have those seven items that I mentioned in place. So a Facebook page, an Instagram account, which is optional, a business manager, which is essential, an ad account, a Facebook pixel set up. You're gonna to want to have somewhere to send your traffic. So you need to know your URLs and have those verified within Facebook as well. And then you're gonna to wanna to have a strong offer. So once you're ready to start doing this, you're gonna to want to head over, like I showed you earlier, to business.facebook.com. That is going to allow you to create a Facebook ad account. So it's business.facebook.com forward slash create. You can then start filling in your information. You'll then get taken into your business account. You can then start adding in your pages, your ad accounts. You can start looking at Facebook pixels and I'll be filming more videos on all of these uh, elements in depth so you understand how to set them up, how to install them, how to manage them. You can create your ad accounts, you can add your staff members in, you can essentially start preparing for running campaigns. So I hope this video has been very actionable and useful. I'm gonna film a lot more videos in this series going forward. So this will be a complete series. There's a link to the playlist in the description of this video. I'm gonna try and release these videos as frequently as possible so that you can follow along and start to learn how to create the campaigns. The next steps are gonna be diving a little bit more in depth into the setup of some of these elements and preparing to actually build out campaigns and go live. So with that said, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Any questions, leave in the comments, anything you think I've missed or you want me to explain more about, please drop in the comments and I can go through that um, with you and provide some more information. If you wanna work with me and my agency, you can click the link in the description of this video to book a direct call with me and we can have a conversation about that and see if what we offer is the best fit for your business. And if it is, we can actually work with you hands-on to run and manage your paid advertising campaigns. Thank you very much.